Hello, today is launch day for the iPhone 15 and iPhone 15 Pro. I pre-ordered a 15 Pro 256 gigabytes and it arrived today and I'm very ecstatic. Uh, one of the reasons why I pre-ordered one is because I'm really keen on the USB Type-C features such as being able to record straight onto an external SSD as well as being able to connect it to screen and use the screen as the monitor. And that also got me thinking, can the iPhone be used as a PC or a computer? And this is exactly what we're going to find out. So here is my computer set up, upstairs in my bedroom. I'm using a ViewSonic display, it's 24 inches IPS panel. And what's really amazing about it is that it's a type C monitor, uh, but not just any regular type C monitor, but this one has 60 watt power delivery as well. Um, so be very careful if you buy a USB type C monitor because some of them only delivers power up to 30 or even as low as 15 watts, which is not great because if you then connect a MacBook Pro to the monitor, the monitor would not be able to charge the laptop. So make sure you get one that's, that offers adequate power delivery for your laptop, whether it's 60 or 70 watts. Otherwise, that kind of defeats the purpose of using Type-C, which is all about using a single cable um, from your laptop to the monitor for both power and video and potentially even audio. And what I love about this is that it moves up and down, it tilts, it swivels as well. Lots of adjustability and I'll link to it below. So, as you can see, I am on YouTube and I'm watching the Apple presentation of the 15 Pro and the USB-C features. And um, yeah, I can browse the website as well. And there's also video. Instantly transfer and 48 audio. megapixel Pro RAW directly. From However, that audio was actually coming from my Bose speaker. The monitor does have uh, built-in speakers, but they are they are incredibly weak. But I just wanted to show you that with one cable, you can get sound, video, and audio from your laptop to the screen. So here is my laptop plugged in with the USB Type C cable. Let's just unplug that and see what happens when we plug it in to my iPhone. Unlock. And there we go. There is a video. And if I go on the website, it's super responsive. It's almost one-to-one. -one. It does look a little bit faster on the iPhone because um, it has 120 hertz but you can see that the display controller is genuinely really good. Um, if I turn the phone landscape on a website, you rotate as well. There is letterboxing at the top. And um, yeah, you can definitely browse on this if you want to, but the aspect ratio isn't really that great. But let's just leave the phone like that. And to the monitor, I have also plugged in keyboard and a mouse. It's all plugged in there using this uh, 2.4 gigahertz YouTube transmitter and receiver. And just to show you, the mouse does not work. Keyboard, the arrow buttons, the directional keys, they certainly work. And if I go into the address bar at the top, the URL bar, that works fine. However, I think we can get the mouse to work by going into settings and going into accessibility, click on touch, assistive touch on. And what we then get is a cursor. And now I can use the mouse. All the letters and numbers work. Um, however, there are some things that doesn't seem to work that well. And for example, escape button doesn't do anything. Um, and some of the other function keys 
Yes, the volume works actually. Volume up, volume down. These are the shortcut keys on the keyboard and surprisingly, some of them work, which is nice to see. Uh, but overall, here you go. There's a cursor. And now let's go back on YouTube. And I can scroll, the scroll wheel works. Very, very nice. However, YouTube does not work in landscape mode, which is unfortunate. Does not work in landscape mode, only portrait, which means that there's quite a lot of real estate that is wasted. And if I open up the camera app, seem to work fine. Um, see if I can rotate it, that's photos, video. There we go. Works really, really well. So yeah, the mouse does work, but then we have this annoying <laughs> little touch button there as well. So it's a bit of, a little bit of an eyesore, um, which isn't that great. And I actually do wish that landscape mode worked really well, worked a lot better, um, because then, for example, if I plug in my iPad, which is an M1 MacBook Pro, 11 inches. So I just need to unlock it. That one works right away, which is lovely. But the experience on the iPad is so much better. Yeah, I can just move the cursor down here. I don't need to activate assisting. I don't need to activate assistive touch or anything and some of buttons like escape that works here. Um, yeah, and it just seemed to have stage manager, which also helps, uh, which means that you can take advantage of more of the screen, but even here it's still letterboxed and that causes a problem, especially on the iPhone. If you watch video, As you can see in the video, the experience isn't that good. The video is only viewable in a small area of the screen, which means that everything else is wasted. And what makes that particularly bad is if you want to use this professionally and you want to have your iPhone plugged into to the screen and you want to preview the content in 4K resolution, you will not be able to do it. Uh, because it doesn't seem to have a display controller or software that enables you to take full advantage of the monitor. I do hope that that will change eventually, um, but that all really depends on what Apple's aims are with the USB Type-C features, because they, they have invested heavily in spatial computing, and I can expect them wanting to edge us towards that rather than using the iPhone as a computer and trying to use the iPhone as a computer now on the monitor feels like trying to use the iPad as a computer in 2015, 2016. Very clunky, a bit like trying to eat French fries with a spoon. Sure, you can almost make it work, but you're wasting a lot of time trying to make it work rather than cracking on with your work. Um, However, we do carry the iPad with us everywhere, um, or even like, you know, the iPhone especially, I meant, and the hardware is clearly there. So what I would love to see is stage manager on there, but I would also love to see the ability to control audio, because what happens is that when you plug in a iPhone or iPad to a USB Type-C monitor or to a HDMI display, the audio will be pushed to that device. So that means that with this monitor, if I don't want to use its built-in speaker with my iPhone, there is no option to output audio to the built-in speakers on the iPhone or to my Bluetooth speaker. And that's a problem, especially if your monitor doesn't have speakers, then 
the phone is outputting sound to it, but you're not getting speakers through the monitor, but then you also can't get audio output elsewhere. And that explains why I've not actually used my iPad with the external monitor at all. I've mainly used the laptop because the laptop just feels a lot more complete. Like the iPad has all the hardware as the same system on chip as my MacBook, but it's significantly hampered by software, um, especially when it comes to flexibility with audio settings and uh, letterboxing. Um, so if you are maybe looking to buy an iPhone 15 Pro with the view to use it as a computer, I don't think that's a good idea. Treat the USB Type-C features as extras that are really nice to have. Um, but for now, it cannot be used as a computer. Um, but either way, USB-C Type-C is amazing. And now I can use just a single cable, like the same cable to charge my phone, iPad, MacBook Pro, Sony XM3 headphones, Xbox controllers, and Amazon Fire tablets. It's super convenient. And I do look forward to using the um, iPhone as a viewfinder as well um, when I shoot video here on my computer. And I also look forward to recording video straight onto these drives because this essentially enables you to um, expand the storage of your iPhone um, because upgrading from 256 to one terabyte it's very expensive, um, but these drives are really cheap. You, you, you can get one terabyte one for about 50 pounds. And also the beauty of, of uh, recording the video straight onto it is that I can then plug it in to my MacBook and start editing right away. I don't need to wait hours for content from my phone, for the videos to upload to iCloud and then download to my laptop, but I can just transfer everything using one of these drives. So, let me unplug 